Who is this guy? Why does he always use expensive gear? Expensive, 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 expensive. When can you do a budget bushcraft video? Well, I hear you folks, and I woke up this morning and thought, you know what? It's about time I make that video for you guys. And so, I went on over to Amazon and set myself the challenge to try and build a full bushcraft loadout for £100, which is around $120, with the aim of heading to the woods, making a fire, building a shelter, and sleeping overnight in it. And so I bought a foam camping mat, some pillowcases, you'll see why later, a small folding handsaw, seven meters of paracord, a sleeping bag, a canteen and nesting cup, a tarp, a fire steel, and a knife. The total came to 97 pounds and 42 pence. You'll notice I didn't buy an ax or a lighter. I wanted this to be a bit more of a challenge. And with that, I headed off into the woods. Let's take a closer look at the gear and then get to building a shelter. The canteen bottle is stainless steel and can carry one liter of water. The nesting cup has a handle which folds out from underneath and then locks in place with a small metal bar. The bottle cover has a belt loop, which is a handy addition, but I don't have a need to carry my water bottle on me during this camp out as I won't be straying too far from camp. I could have gone for a plastic bottle and cup, but the stainless steel bottle will far outlast the plastic one. The knife is the cheapest one I could find. It's a stainless steel Holterfors craftsman's knife with a four and a half inch handle and a three and a half inch blade. It has a Scandinavian grind and it cost me £9.25. The blade thickness is only two and a half millimetres, which means that it's not made for heavy use like battening through wood. Although I bet it can be done and we'll push this knife a lot more later in the video. I like the fact that the grip is curved at both ends and it feels ergonomically tough. The sheath feels very cheap and although it has a belt attachment, it's a right faff trying to get it secured. It does do the job once it's on though. The small folding saw cost me £6.99. It has a 3.9 inch blade and it claims it has a pro anti-slip handle. We'll see about that when we use it. The teeth on it are sharp, but they're pretty small. So I've got a feeling it's gonna take a while to saw through wood. It has a hole if you want to tie a carrying loop to it, but I can't be bothered to do that. Overall, I like that it's really compact and has a bright green handle, so I won't lose it on the forest floor. The paracord cost me £9.99. And in order to keep under the 100 pound limit, I only bought seven meters of it. Interestingly, I found out this isn't your standard 550 paracord. It has seven polyester inner strands and the yellow strand is actually 40 pound braid for fishing with. The red strand is waterproof flax fire tinder and the thinnest white strand is a cotton thread which can be used for sewing up holes in clothes. The fire steel cost me five pounds 49. There were cheaper ones out there but they looked a little flimsy. The striking rod itself has a protective housing on it, which you can unscrew to reveal the ferro rod. As for the striker itself, it does have some increments for map reading and a bottle opener. I also noticed a small button compass on the top of the outer casing, a nice touch, but I find these little compasses to be pretty inaccurate. The foam roll mat is just, well, a foam roll mat. Not much to talk about with this one, other than I paid six pounds 49 for it and it looks very thin. The tarp is a standard polyethylene tarp measuring 3.4 by 2.9 meters. I would have preferred to get a smaller tarp, but for some reason this size tarp was the cheapest. It cost me £11.24. These poly tarps are cheap as chips, but they are not very durable. I did notice that it has reinforced plastic corners and 14 metal eyelets for tie-out points. The sleeping bag cost me £19.99. It measures 220 centimeters by 75 centimeters. It has your standard sleeping bag things like adjustable drawstring hood and double sided zipper. The company claimed that it is waterproof, which I struggle to believe. And wait for this, according to their advertisement, you can use it for hiking, camping, touring, and an office nap? Who brings a sleeping bag to the office? Anyway, last but not least, I had just under 10 pounds remaining and I realized I had nothing to carry my gear into the woods with me. Backpacks were too expensive and out of the question and so I spent £4.99 on two pillowcases, which I can now use to stuff all my gear in and carry it with me. I can keep the other pillowcase spare to put any wet gear in and keep it separate from the other gear. And so with that, let's head into the woods and build a shelter. I laid out my tarp to get an idea of where I wanted to build the shelter and how much room I would need. I decided that the tarp was a bit too big given I only had a small amount of paracord. And so I folded the tarp in half. 
I then quickly secured both corner ends of the tarp together with some short lengths of paracord. This just makes it easier to maneuver about. In terms of knots, I just used a basic arbor knot. You'll notice the paracord strands begin to flay out once I've cut it. Normally I would use a lighter to burn the ends of these and seal them in, but I didn't buy a lighter so I have to roll with it as it is. Next up, I got my small folding pruning saw and cut some logs about 4 inches in diameter. This was about the size limit for this small saw. Quick tip, to make sawing through wood easier, tilt your saw at an angle to the wood and start sawing. Then, after a short while, bring your saw back horizontally and begin sawing that way. It reduces the friction on your saw blade and cuts through wood a lot quicker. Now, I'm not going to lie, this little saw felt great to use for the first 10 minutes. After that, it was a pain in the backside. As the blade is so small, it meant I had to do tons of small sawing motions, which really started to drain my energy compared to using a bigger saw. The small teeth meant that it took a good while to actually get through the wood, but it did do the job I needed it to, and after about 30 minutes, I had cut up the majority of the wood that I would need for this shelter setup. Being spring, daytime temperatures are starting to warm up, so I decided to drop a layer and rep the bushcraft t-shirt which is available now at taofficial.com. Once my shameless plug was out of the way, I carried the wood back to the camp. Overall, I gathered six logs, which I cut to the same length as the width of my tarp. Now, a few of these logs have branches sticking out from them. Normally, I would use an ax or a hatchet to just chop these off, but I don't have an ax. So instead, I just push the branches up against the tree to snap off the majority of the short branches. Then, I grabbed some thin sticks and used the knife to put a point on them. The knife itself was really sharp, but being a carving knife, it was tricky to get much power when removing the wood. Still, the Scandi grind meant that it can slice off big chunks of wood, no problem. Again, an axe would have made light work of this. On the opposite end of the stake, I just beveled it with the knife so that when I hit it into the ground, it doesn't mushroom out. Then I laid a long log down parallel to the tarp and pinched it in place using the vertical stakes. I did the same to the other side. I just used a slightly heavier piece of wood as a batten to knot them in. Now all I needed to do was stack the logs on top of each other. Once I got three logs high, the stakes started to splay out. And so I cut a small piece of cordage and tied an arbor knot to bring the stakes closer together. I did the same to the other side. What this does is it stops the stakes from splaying out wider as I put more heavy logs on top. Now I just put the three remaining logs on the top. There were a few pokey branches that needed sawing, so I removed those to help make the wall as level as possible. The last log on the top is going to have the tarp laying against it, so I needed to remove all of the sticking out branches on this log so that it was smooth. I finished it off with two more arbor knots either side of the wall. The great thing about securing the stakes with an arbor knot is that you need very little cordage to do it. I only have seven meters, so I'll need every centimeter I can get. With the log secure, I cut the stakes to level with the wall. I won't throw these offcuts away though, as they will be useful for the fire later on. And now, here comes the rain, right on time. Now the issue with these poly tarps is that the metal eyelets are so small that any wood pegs you try to use with them are generally too small and will snap. They are really only made for thin metal pegs. However, using just a short six inch piece of cordage, I can feed one end through the eyelet and then tie a loop on the other end. This gives me much more space to be able to fit a thicker peg through. I secure these loops to every eyelet along the back of the tarp where it's doubled over. Then I folded the tarp over the back of the log wall and staked out the loops with the wood pegs. Next, I cut a long thin stick, which was about six inches longer than the width of the tarp and then removed all of the pokey branches from it. I slid this through the front of the tarp and left three inches of the stick poking out from both ends. With my remaining paracord, I doubled it over on itself and cut it in half. These will be used for guy lines. I made a few more stakes using the handsaw. When making guy line stakes, I try to find sticks with lots of small branches coming off them. I cut away the majority of the side branches and leave the biggest branch sticking out a few inches. This acts like a hook to prevent the guy line from slipping off the stake. I use the knife to put a point on one end and then bevel the flat end. Then I lashed a stick to the front corner of the tarp. Again, I used an arbor knot and a short lashing to do this. I hammered in the stake and then wrapped the guy line around it, bringing the stick up vertical. I used an adjustable guy line hitch to secure the paracord to the stakes. 
This means that if the tarp is losing tension over time, I can just slide the adjustable knot and pull the tarp tighter again. I repeated the process on the other side. A quick arbor knot and lashing, then wrapped around the peg, which I placed diagonally in front of the shelter, and then a guy line hitch to secure the paracord. And now the shelter is complete. It's large enough so that I can easily lie down inside and not feel cramped. And if ever I needed to make the shelter even bigger, I could just unfold the tarp to extend the front area. So far, I have only used the knife, saw, tarp and paracord to build this shelter. It doesn't matter whether there are many gaps in the logs at the back wall, as the tarp totally covers these anyway. Now, I could have just made this shelter without a back wall at all and just pegged the tarp down to the ground. But the back wall allows for there to be much more space under the tarp, as well as cutting out any wind that comes through this part of the forest. With my shelter built, it was time to get a fire going. First, I cut off a small section of log about three inches in diameter. Remember those offcuts from the stakes I made earlier? Well, I used the short piece of log as a solid base to batten the wood stakes in half. Then I split them down again to make thin pieces of wood. As the forest is soaking wet, so is much of the wood. So I need to split open the sticks to expose the dry inner layer. Now, I mentioned earlier that this knife doesn't have a full tang, which means that the metal does not run the entire length of the handle. This normally means that you shouldn't batten down on it as you risk breaking the handle. But I've done this many times before and these handles are pretty robust. As I'm not going to be doing this all the time with this particular knife, I can get away with it. With the wood split, I then use the knife to create fine curls of wood. This is where this knife comes into its own. I was really impressed with its ability to make a feather stick. For something that is under £10, it's a very good knife and the blade still remains really sharp after the battening. I made three feather sticks in total. Then I cleared some ground in front of the shelter and laid down some of the split wood to act as a raft and keep my fire off the wet ground. Before I lit the fire, I poured out some water into the canteen cup to get ready to boil. Also, not a bad time to take a swig of water for myself. Most fire steels, when you first buy them, will have a protective coating on them to stop them from rusting. For the fire steel to work effectively, you need to remove some of this coating first, otherwise you won't get any sparks. Once the strip of coating has been removed, then I could use the side edge of the striker to get sparks to come off the fire steel. I was surprised at how easy the sparks were coming off this fire steel using the small striker. I had two small offcuts of paracord left, so I pulled out some of the waterproof flax fire cord and scrunched it up into a ball. Then I scraped off a few sparks from the fire steel to test it was working efficiently, and now it was time to light the flax cord. It ignited almost instantly, and I quickly placed the feather sticks on top to grow the fire. Then I added the rest of the wood shavings and small pieces of thin kindling. And now we have a fire. I placed the canteen cup near the fire and added some spaghetti. While the water was boiling, I laid out the roll mat and spent some time carving up some chopsticks because I didn't buy any cutlery to eat with. A quick tip for you guys. The spine of this knife is relatively smooth and it doesn't have a 90 degree spine, which means that it doesn't really throw sparks from a fire steel. I would need to grind it flat with a file. However, despite the fact that there isn't a 90 degree spine on the back of the knife, the very tip of the knife where the grind from each side meets each other creates a sharp enough angle that can be used to strike sparks from the fire steel. It's only really a small area, but it saves you from having to use the blade of your knife to get sparks to come off. This has worked for me with all of my knives which have a Scandinavian grind to them. I added a small sachet of cream sauce to the spaghetti and then ate dinner. This is often my favourite part of camping, as the hard work is done and I can sit back and enjoy the surrounding forest. With darkness approaching, I like to try and get my gear organised before going to bed, so I unroll my sleeping bag and let it air, and I bring all my gear into the shelter. I should probably mention, I didn't buy a headlight as part of my kit, as it would have taken me over the £100 budget. I just used my phone light as a torch for this trip, but it's something that I think you definitely need in your kit if you are planning to overnight. As well as that, it's essential that you have a first aid kit with you on all of your trips. There was only a small amount of rain overnight, but the tarp kept things totally dry. The next morning I needed to pack down camp quickly, so I ate some fruit, packed up the sleeping bag, and rolled up the foam mat. As with any short term camping trip, it's important to leave no trace. It doesn't take long to dismantle the shelter and to pack away the tarp. I made sure that there was no trace of fire and left the site as I had found it. Then I packed away the gear in my trusty pillowcase 
and headed off back to the car. And that's it folks, a comfortable night in the woods, building a shelter, making a fire and camping out for the night, all with a setup that costs less than £100. I hope you enjoyed the episode, I will put a link below to all the gear that I bought for this trip. Feel free to subscribe if you enjoyed it, and be sure to check out my second channel Life of Mike for more of my vlogs, as well as our sister channel TA Fishing for weekly outdoor videos. Cheers for watching folks, and I'll see you in the next one.